Satsang 34 Look at God through the eyes of the devotee. 4th December 1934 Evening Satsang The devotee himself is God. Never think that God is different from his devotee. It is not correct to imagine that someone will come to you and he will do something to turn you into God. Whatever you have done is simply only what has been done. That much is true. However, do not suppose that you can, by some effort, somehow become God. Illusion, Maya, will try to unsettle you in your decision. But never presume that illusion will give you the status of God. The individual has come into existence and you will be able to realize the self through the indication of your own inner freedom. And this conviction that you make will be final. And you can be successful if you put forth the effort and have the earnestness and conviction. When you feel that when you are taking yourself to be a human being, you are fully missing the mark and creating a big chaos, only then will you realize the self. When you feel like and understand that you are becoming like God, that godless, godliness is developing, then truly you are already God. Just as a man does not like wearing a sari, similarly, when one realizes the self, he does not like to lead a worldly life. The devotee must have the conviction that he is pure, truth, totally free. You were never an individual. You must develop the attitude, I am not the body, I am Brahman. What need do I have for the objects of the senses? Take note of all the thoughts that come into the mind. Inquire, examine them every day. You should observe how the feeling of your own nature has changed from that which you were experiencing before coming into contact with a saint or sage. You should observe in what way you were behaving before and how your consciousness is changed while you were working throughout your day. What did the mind like before and what kind of satisfaction did it give you prior to this illumined contact? What does it like now? What is the meaning of your life? What is its nature, its quality? Gradually, as you develop greater understanding of your true nature, the faculties like eating, protection, development, 
and the desire for things conducive to realizing that true nature will change. And your actions will be such that they will be helpful for fulfilling those needs. All beings act according to their nature and species. The knowledge of our nature and our species causes us to collect things or to give up things. Our mind, our intellect, our consciousness, and the ego sense all function in accordance with our nature, our species, our position, and our circumstances. To know reality is to look and to be sure about our true nature. When you are sure about that, it is called steady self-knowledge, abiding awareness. Only when we definitely know how and what our life is can we decide what we need and what we do not need. Examine daily and inquire into the thoughts you project. Are they about spiritual life or are they about worldly life? One who inquires in this way gains an inner richness. For one whose attention is turned towards the reality, the first effect is desirelessness. Then, one experiences that whatever may be given to him or taken away from him does not matter as he does not need anything. Charity means that there is no desire to maintain even that which one possesses. Then there is true knowledge. And one becomes victorious over illusion. There is no sorrow for that which is gone. The 14 senses are emissaries of the God of death, Yama. The function of the senses is to increase their activities and invite punishment. To escape from this is extremely difficult. First, you must have the urge to free yourself from this. Such an aspirant is truly benefited when he meets the guru. The Guru points the way only to the one who is ready. And the teaching is useful only when one is ready. After meeting the Guru, you must be disciplined and sincerely inquire. Only then will the path become easy for you. The departed forefathers will shower flowers on the one who is able to beat the drums of victory in spiritual life. And only one who remains in the state of Brahman consciousness becomes successful. Only he achieves the goal. Only his boat has reached the other shore and become victorious. Then there is liberation, 
मुक्ति This one self dwells in everyone's heart, all pervading, everywhere. Then only is there life in freedom, without any touch of worry, without any desire, the life that is free from all actions. All praise such a one and like to have a glimpse of him. If one attains liberation while still living, it is considered to be the glory of God. Examine your behavior every day and you will know for yourself what virtues you have developed. If you identify yourself with God, you will also gain his charity. If you come to the realization that you are Brahman, absolute pure consciousness, you will be Brahman. And you will not desire anything else. If a lamp is lit in a house, the light shines out through the window. And in a similar way, if Brahman shines within, its signs are evident and reflected on the outside. Consider desirelessness as a great profit that is gained. What does it mean to you if some other aspirant behaves in a certain way? What do you lose if he goes astray? We must free ourselves from the concept of you. Otherwise, it becomes a bondage, a source of worry. Therefore, do not worry about anybody. Only then are you free and your inner glow will have no bounds. Great saints like Rama, Krishna, and Tukaram are very famous. The older the fame, the greater the glory. The saints and sages' renown and dignity only go on increasing. The one who has escaped from this illusion is the truly brave one, courageous. Without concern for renown, such a one becomes famous and people sing his praises. <laughs> 